On my French style press cake here, I have the inscription Ooh La La, which has been done with the same script. This was all done with lower case. And you can see how great this looks on this bright, hot pink color. Um, on this particular cake, I also have polka dots. Polka dots is a very popular theme in French decorating. And polka dots can be made in white, in black, in different colors. Here I've rolled out some black gum paste. I'm going to use a number 12 piping tip. And I will just cut out some of these little discs with my piping tip. So just several of those. These can be made and attached straight away, or they can be attached with a little royal icing afterwards. When I attach these to my cake board, I will just take a little bit of edible glue where I want these to sit. So just put these on, and then just lift this up on my little mini spatula, place that into position, and then just press this down. So here this you will have a polka dot theme onto your cake board. For my first cake, I have used a lace edging on the edge of the corners of the four sides of the purse cake. This has been made using a patchwork cutter lace strip. This comes in a set of two, there's this design and a little trellis design. When we use patchwork cutters, I have rolled out some gum paste, fairly thin, and then I will take a little Crisco, or shortening, and I will rub this onto my board, because we actually want the paste to physically stick to the Crisco. Pat, this technique is used for any of the patchwork cutters. A little Crisco is then rubbed onto the lace design and you press this on. Now when I did this cake I actually just need four strips like this and in fact this will just need to be cut down a little bit. But this is made as a continuous cutter so if you wanted to make a longer strip you can just continue this as long as you need. Once you have got this cut, I will then just trim the ends of this and usually um, I leave this excess paste in place until after I have removed the little small pieces. So just taking my pin I will then remove these little shapes which are almost like a boomerang shape and these will be removed from each of the pieces of lace. Again if you have trouble uh, get removing these pieces it probably means that your paste was a little bit too thick or you haven't pressed enough haven't put enough pressure when you've cut out the design. You just continue down with this. Now this has to be done in gum paste because this lace is very fine and this is wonderful to use around a cake board. You can use this in all sorts of cakes and as little accent lace pieces. Once I then have got to that position I will then take away my excess paste and I will just pull away the excess paste here, so leaving my black lace onto my board. When I did the cake, I then turned this over, I brushed a little edible glue, the edible glue was just brushed down the center, and then just a little bit, just a little small amount each side, and then this was lifted up and then positioned on the side of the cake. This is where the stripe stencil and the twirl stencil meet, and trim this to design you need, size you need. For the press handle, I have made a small handle and this has been inserted into the cake. When I made this, I have taken a piece of plastic. This has actually just been taken from a plastic fondant bucket, which I cut the bucket this way. And uh, I have made this uh, strip just under one inch wide. I then have taken my multi-ribbon cutter and I've measured put in one large spacer in to make this the width of the strip. I have rolled out some black gum paste. I will then cut down the strip, remove the excess paste. This is a very simple way to make a purse handle. And in the case of my cake, because I want a black and white color scheme, I'm leaving the underneath just white and then the top will be black. You could of course cover this both sides with paste. I will turn this over. I will then brush just a little bit of glue over the surface of this. Sometimes I do baskets with more rustic handles where I use a clay gun. But here I'm just doing a simple strip. Taking this strip, I will then attach this to the plastic here. 
and just follow the shape of the plastic that's going over the top. Just gently rub this with your finger. So you can see this will give me my handle and then I will then attach this into the cake while this is still soft so then once the gum paste dries this will make a fairly rigid handle and the little tabs I've cut on the end of the plastic will be just pushed into the top surface of the cake. On the fabulous purse cake I made here, this has been done with the stencil technique I use for the striped stencil. Because the toile I've used on the side, I rolled out just white rolled fondant, laid the stencil on the top and then used black dusting powder. Once I'd stenciled the design with dusting powder, I then cut out a pattern for the front and back of the purse cake from a template. Then I continued rolling out some more white rolled fondant then using a striped stencil just like I showed you in the first part of the demonstration. I used a black dusting powder, cut the striped stencil using a template for the two sides of the cake, here and here, and also for the top of the cake. While the fondant was still soft, I attached the pieces and then I made the top piece which was done from a pattern and I then draped that over the top to make the top of the purse. Made the handle just like I've shown you and then attached that into the soft fondant. I have a fleur-de-lis on the front of the purse and two small fleur-de-lis on the side. These were made in the same way as I demonstrated but only painted silver. I've used a number two shell border around the base of the cake and around the edge of the top part of the purse and then the lace I've just demonstrated onto the edge. Finish this off with polka dots and an inscription. This has been done with an electric pink paste color for the baseboard and then I've used the black gel and black powder for the piping and dusting. The finishing touch on this cake is a spray of French tulips. In this presentation I will be showing you two types of tulips. These are tulips made with patchwork cutters which are great to use for petty fours and for other cakes and these are a sort of half relief tulip and I'm now going to demonstrate how to make those. For the tulips on the purse cake, I'm going to be using the tulips from the Patchwork Cutter Spring Flower Set. This is a great set which has lots of different spring flowers. This is the tulip and the tulip leaf I will be using. Also on here there is a tulip embosser which would be very nice to use on a cake board. A little hydrangea, a forget-me-not. These are paper whites or little jonquils. Here we have a daffodil, we have two daffodil leaves and also have a lily. So these can be used at other times of year. For example, the lily could be used in the fall as well as during the spring. When making the tulip, uh, first of all, you need to decide what color you're going to make the tulips. Today I'm going to make them in white with a soft pink on the edge. But this could be done in any color you wish to. And this is gum paste. First of all, for the tulip, for the base of the tulip, I'm going to take a number seven small. That means in the size guide, the number seven will just go through the hole on the number seven hole. Now, if you were making, in the case of my purse cake, I had five tulips, so then I would make another four balls of paste the same size. I'm going to put the tulip onto this plaque here. So taking this piece of paste. Now, this actually could be made in the same fondant you've covered the board or the plaque with because this won't be seen. But you're just going to make this into a small cone. This is approximately about three quarters of an inch long and I will then flatten this down around the edge so it makes it half relief. Taking this with a little glue, just going to stick a little glue to the back of this and then just going to attach this onto my plaque here. and you would position your tulips. Now sometimes you need to start putting the tulips on before you decide where the other cones are going to be positioned. Then taking a little bit more paste, now just like I showed making the lace, I will put a little Crisco down and I will roll out the paste on a little Crisco so that the paste actually sticks down to the Crisco surface. Taking the cutter I will rub a little Crisco onto the edge of the cutter and I'll now take this and just press this down. Now when we use this technique we don't wiggle the cutter, you just press firmly down, remove this. Using my metal knife tool I will remove then the excess paste so this will then leave my tulip 
on the board. And in the case of my porous cake, I made five of these tulips. I made a long strip and then cut out five of these at one time. This is now ready to move on to the next stage, which will be the coloring. To color the tulip for my porous cake, but of course at home you could use any color combination. And first of all, we're going to take just a little super pearl. This is the pearlescent dusting powder. And I will just brush this over the tulip to give a nice pearlized sheen. Then I will move on to taking some pink. This is a color called American Beauty. This is a fabulous color, which is a really nice hot pink. And this is great for the edge of my tulips. This is also one I use on things like stargazer lilies and on other flowers where I want a nice vibrant color. This was originally developed for the American Beauty Rose, which is a hot pink colored rose, like a magenta pink. So I'm going to brush this with a flat brush so I have a little pink just around the edge of the tulip. Then finally I have here some moss green. This is some moss green powder, but this time I've reduced this with a little cornstarch to make a pale green. And I would just brush a little bit of pale green just at the base of the tulip from the bottom coming up. So I'll have a little green at the base of the tulip. So this will give me my coloring onto the tulip. Once you have colored your tulip, so if you're going to be doing an arrangement of tulips, you're not sure exactly where to put them all, these can just be put under a plastic flap or into a Ziploc bag to stop them drying. Once you have got the tulip ready, you need to attach this while it's soft because this has to follow the shape of the cone. So I will then position him into place, following the shape of the cone here like that. So this will give me my, my tulip. So this will give me my tulip design onto my plaque. Although the tulip has a stem, it's a fairly short stem, and in the case of my bunch of tulips on my purse cake, I wanted to make the stems longer. So I have done these using a clay gun. The clay gun comes with 19 little discs that fit in the end. Here I have one of the small round discs. This is the uh, second to smallest size one. Taking the paste, this again is gum paste here. I've colored this with some moss green. Put a little Crisco into this and just knead this so it becomes nice and soft. This will make it easier to push out. Drop this into the clay gun. When using very small holes like this, you don't need to put too much pasting because if not, you'll have problems pushing this out. Now you can press this out using your fingers. This will come out. And another way we can do this is we can use a clay gun pusher. This is a special little tool or gadget that makes it very, very easy so that when you just press this, you can just use one hand or you can use your hand like this and this will come out from the clay gun. This makes it very good, especially when you're using gum paste. Rolled fondant comes out very easy, but when you're using 50-50 paste or um, gum paste is more dense. Once we have got the piece of the stem out. If you didn't have a clay gun, you could just do this freehand, but you need to try and make sure this is a nice regular thickness. And then you will take this and attach this. Use a little edible glue, and you're just going to attach this where you want the tulip stem to meet the tulip. And then you can then make this to whatever shape you want this to be. So you can just give this a little curve, or you can give the tulip a nice shape. Usually the bottom of the tulip stem, I like to just cut this at an angle. So just cut this at an angle. And then usually just two or three places, I would just use a little bit of edible glue just to attach this. Once we have the stem of the tulip, we will then take some green, and I will roll this out again on a little Crisco. Now, if you're going to be using the pasta machine to roll your paste out with, which you can do, especially for production work, it makes it much quicker. When you take your paste out of the pasta machine, then put a little Crisco down on your board and just lay the paste down. If you're rolling it out like I am showing you here, just roll out directly on a little thin film of Crisco. Taking the leaf cutter, this is the tulip leaf cutter, I will then cut out some tulip leaves here, so I'm going to cut out two tulip leaves, 
When I did the arrangement, I arranged some of the tulips in my bunch, then added some leaves, and then continued with some more tulips. Again, taking my metal tool here, just going to remove the excess paste. So as you can see here, we then end up with our tulip leaves. I'm going to lift these up. These can be softened, so you can work these on a cell pad to soften the ends. But normally what I do here is I just pinch the base of the tulip leaf a little like a taco shell. Take a little bit of edible glue. Just decide where you want the tulip leaf to sit. I pipe a line of glue here and then I will just attach the tulip leaf and you can just give a little bit of a shape to it. And we'll then take another one which is going to come out here. Again, lift this up. Just pinch this down the base. You can just bring your tulip just to give it a shape. The other end of the metal knife tool can be used if you wanted to make a little fold in the tulip or sometimes I fold the ends over like this just to give a little bit of a more natural look to the tulip. So here you see we have our tulip and its leaves and stem. So here you can see a close-up detail of the finished spray of tulips. So I have five tulips, so what I actually did is I put these tulips here in first, then I put a leaf in, the third tulip, and then I've actually attached these two tulips with a little bit of white royal icing, and then finished off by having some leaves and the stems. Finally, I took a little bit of the green paste I made the leaves with, softened with some edible glue, put a little bit of this here, and then I've made a small bow here out of a sheer polka dot ribbon which ties in with the polka dot design onto this. This could also, of course, be made with paste as well, but here I've just got a sheer ribbon to match the sheer ribbon on the side of the cake board. So here is your spray of tulips, and these are a great accent to use for many different types of cakes, anniversary cakes. And uh, the next part of the demonstration is going to be the French tulip, three-dimensional tulip, but you could, if you were doing a wedding cake with tulips on, use these on the cake board and then have the French tulips in an arrangement on the top.